All right, today I'm gonna to be getting some travel B-roll footage and I wanted to bring you along with me behind the scenes. I'm gonna be using the Sony a7S III as well as the brand new Zion Weeble II. Zion recently sent me this gimbal to test it out. It's a really cool gimbal that has a sling mode design that allows me to reach a huge different range of angles, as well as having a really surprisingly useful flip out screen that allows you to access a bunch of different features, as well as a new algorithm that eliminates micro jitters. However, my favorite part of this design is that it is so compact, it folds down, the pieces come off, so I can actually end up fitting it inside my backpack with the rest of my camera gear. But rather than just talk about all the technical features of this gimbal, I'm gonna go out and use it and you can be the judge of how well it performs. But before we get shooting, we're gonna need a model. Paolo, what are you doing here, bro? Just hiking. What are you doing here, bro? I'm just filming, man. I, I would actually, do you mind if you're a model for me right now? For sure not, let's do it. it by the way, is it, is it the new gimbal from Zion? All right, so the first shot I'm going to get right now is Paolo as if he's kind of exploring this nice bit of architecture right here. So how a beginner might do this, getting some travel kind of B-roll, might be, Paolo, you want to just start walking there? Even with an awesome gimbal and awesome camera, they might just kind of pan like this and get a nice smooth pan of Paolo walking around. Or they might kind of just walk kind of like this and just try and get a, a shot of Paolo like that. So instead, we're gonna be a bit more intentional about this. I wanna really emphasize these arches here. And the way I can do this is getting down a bit lower and having Paolo, you can use the sling here actually, and Paolo just walking around and having the arches kind of shift past him basically, so. So we're getting a nice low angle perspective of these arches kind of moving past him as he walks. And we can emphasize that by changing this one shot into more of a scene. So we're gonna do exactly the same. I'm gonna get Paolo to do that again. And I'm gonna get a shot where I'm going right alongside him because I wanna be able to see where we are right now, which is these beautiful mountains of Montserrat. Three, two, one, go. Okay, so that's looking super nice. And you cut these two shots together it's a basic medium wide shot cutting into a close up and we should have a really nice mini scene that we can move on from. All right, so now what we're gonna do is get a shot of Paolo walking to this viewpoint and peering over the edge because it's a really amazing view down there. But I don't just wanna get the shot of the view. So what a beginner might do is just get a shot of the view and Paolo, if you wanna walk that way, because they're just focusing on the actual landscape, right? So they might kind of get a shot where they're following here. It's over the shoulder. Don't get me wrong, it looks pretty cool. It's nice and wide, but it is slightly limited, slightly basic. So we're gonna, again, break this down into a couple of shots. Paolo, if you wanna come back, we'll do this again. We're not gonna show the audience what he's actually looking at yet, and instead, we're gonna show the audience what is behind him whilst he's walking towards the actual viewpoint. Okay, and three, two, one, go. Got a couple of good seconds there. So also I need to mention that I'm filming in 120 frames per second. So what that means is that I don't have to get necessarily a whole shot that's 20 seconds long that looks perfect. I know that if within there, there's one or two seconds of good real time footage, I can extend this out to let's say six seconds and have a really nice clean six second shot. That's just a moment in time from the actual real time camera recording. Right, I'm gonna put this right now onto pan follow mode. Get a shot where I'm kind of pushing in and up to Paolo, making him look epic, more like a hero in our story. And go. Wow. Nice. Okay, now I'm just gonna get the final angle 
which is going to be a low, making the most that there's a ledge below where Paolo is. A lot of times you wouldn't obviously be able to do this, you'd be falling off a cliff right now, but luckily we got a ledge lower. So we're going to get a shot of Paolo making the most of the 70 mil. It's going to make it look like the background is moving across. Here we go. Nice, perfect. Okay, so, so far we've got some really epic shots. A lot of low angles of Paolo and, and him looking around and, and the background kind of being big around him. What I'm doing here is switching it up and I'm gonna actually get a close up of these plants, but rather than just film the plants, it's gonna look a little bit random just having Paolo and nature and then suddenly a close up of a leaf. So we're gonna get a forward movements of these plants. Paolo's more or less blurred out in the background, but it's just allowing us to combine these elements of the plant as well as Paolo as he's walking past. Out of all of that, maybe there was one or two seconds of good footage that I can use as a proper shot in the final video. All right, so I just changed my lens to my wide lens, which is a 14 mil. That's gonna spice this video up a lot, give us a massive field of view, and just give a completely different vibe to the video. As well as that, what I'm gonna do is do a more dynamic movement. So Paolo's gonna be starting here and walking across. If you wanna go there now, Paolo, that'd be sick. And then what I'm gonna be doing is doing like a powerful <laughs> walking forward movement where whilst Paolo's going sideways, I'm kind of pushing forward to reveal this mountain. So it should be kind of fast paced a little bit. Two, one, go. Nice. So that shot added a bit more dynamicness. I told Paolo to be a bit more energetic. I was moving a lot faster, as you could see, also with the wide lens. And because Paolo was moving in a different direction, it just added this slightly different dynamic to the shot. And we're avoiding this same look that was kind of a little bit cropped, a little bit samey after a while. All right, so I'm just gonna follow up in that vein of thought. And I'm gonna get another shot of the monastery here this time. And what I'm gonna do is do a similar shot, except this time without Paolo. Because we're following the movement in the same direction, we were pushing forward, we're also gonna be pushing forward. It's gonna to link together quite well, simply because of the camera movement. So we're gonna use a sling here, filming the floor, and we're gonna be moving up and just revealing the monastery there, as well as the Montserrat mountain. All right, now I got my 35 mil on the camera, which goes down to an aperture of 1.4. So I'm gonna make the most of this really shallow depth of field, especially now it's getting a little bit darker as well. It's gonna help me out lowering the ISO too. So it's nice and focused on Paolo, rather than just looking up at everything else. I'm just making the most here, getting the mountains behind him. And we're just gonna be panning around him here as well. You can actually look into the camera there, Paolo. If anything, that's a pretty cool portrait shot. Perfect, man. Really good stuff. Okay, now there's a big arch in front of me, as you can see here. And this is an interesting opportunity to follow one of the composition rules, which is framing. Now, what that means is not literally how you frame your shot, but finding a frame within your shot to frame a subject. So this arch creates a natural frame within the frame, and we're gonna have Paolo just walking through it right now. So let's go. Beautiful. So I just made the most of that arch there using Paolo as a subject that the arch was framing, and then I transitioned into another kind of shot using the frame to actually then reveal the mountain behind it. So we use the frame to frame Paolo, then we use the frame to frame the mountain. All right, 
And now we're gonna get the final little sequence of shots. We've got an incredible view right here that Paolo's just gonna walk up, look over the view, and we're just gonna show exactly what he's seeing. So, ready to go? Last one, let's go. Now we've got that one showing what he's seeing, we're gonna get, again, as I said before, just one of his face reacting to what he's seeing. So I'm just including foreground elements in this shot as well, just to give it a bit more depth. Perfect. So I really hope that gave you an insight into how I shoot travel videos and how you can start shooting epic travel videos as well. And that is precisely the reason why I created my online program, the Life Capture Academy. The online filmmaking course that shows beginners how to capture their memories beautifully and cinematically. Inside the course, we go everything you need to know about capturing and editing amazing videos of your life using a DSLR camera, GoPro, and yes, even your smartphone. It's structured into a six-week program that is delivered through step-by-step -step tutorials, engaging demonstrations, and specifically designed challenges that will take you from beginner to cinematic video maker. So click the link in the description to learn more about the program or sign up to the free 30-minute webinar that will give you a taste about what is inside the course. I'll see you there. All right, Paolo, I'll let you get on with your hike, man. Thanks for oh, so man. much for helping oh, me out. Good to meet you. Yeah. Anyways. Uh, All right, man. Beautiful gimbal. Yeah. Yeah. Take care, brother. Pa Paolo. Paolo the gimbal. Pa Paolo. 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 Paolo.